you all uh, you all have cracked the code. I, I am convinced that you have cracked the code and that there are a lot of people, a lot of preachers and a lot of community leaders who who will constantly put the blame. Well, you know, this should be taken care of at home and, and uh, that should never happen. Well, it is it is uh, easy to criticize. But what you are doing is, is you are not criticizing. You are looking at the situation and you have actually, you have a remedy. We know for a fact that in our community, there are probably 60% or more of our children that are in public school that do not have dual parentship. There is a one parent situation. We know that. There is no need of us sitting down for the next 20 years complaining about that's not the way it ought to be. But you all have done something about it. There are 125 young people in Beaufort County who otherwise would not have the kind of influence and mentorship that you all are providing. 125 students, you are making a difference in their life and I will tell you, it is to be committed. I've never seen anything so effective in all of Beaufort County or no other place that I've been throughout the world. You all are making a difference. That is why I have gone to our church council and we have pledged $10,000 a year for your effort you are going to get from our church. And we are even going to work toward trying to increase it. Every year you're going to get at least $10,000 in order to do those things that you are doing because you don't get paid. We know you don't get paid, but it costs a lot to actually do the things that you are talking about doing. I, uh, right now, beg every pastor that is listening to this broadcast to please care enough about. These are not just children in Seabrook or in Dale. They are from all over Beaufort County. I beg every pastor to get involved. Go to your church council and get involved and ask them to pledge. They might not be able to do $10,000 a year. Might not be able to do five. But do something to positively affect these young children because I am absolutely convinced that you all have a formula that will make Beaufort County a better place and I'm totally totally convinced of it and so uh, I uh, pledge to you that we will not cease in trying to get you the support that you need for your your program because I'm convinced it's good. And again, I appeal to the sheriff of Beaufort County, to all of the the uh, chief of police of both Port Royal and, and Beaufort and, and any other place, as well as the superintendent of schools and the principals and everybody else to please, please get involved and support this process because I am absolutely convinced it is going to be benefit every citizen in Beaufort County. So uh, tell me, if you will, uh, we've talked around about you. You all had uh, pretty impressive uh, records in your football season. And we know that football is the carrot that uh, that bring the rabbit to the field. So uh, tell us, if you will, uh, what they have done. Who want to start first? Do you want to start at the six and up? Uh, go yeah, right ahead, Coach. I, I go ahead and start. Um, now, our record not as impressive as the 10 and under and the 12 and under. But I want to say this, though. Like I said, football is not the focus, but it's the tool that we use. And the kids are having a great time. But I will say this. Um, as far as our players on that team, we've had some outstanding players um, to achieve some things um, this, this year. And I just want to touch on that. Uh, we had a number of players um, to make the, uh, the all-star team. And also, out of those players, we had a number to make the uh, South Carolina State all, All-Star team in which they went on to play North Carolina State All-Stars in Charlotte, um, and, they, and they won. And um, out of those kids that played, 
and I'm kind of just biased because they're 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 my kids, but they show the greatest respect. They show the greatest um, um, just 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 uh, being um, being great young kids. Um, there were a lot of kids there from different teams throughout the state, and I'm not trying to bad mouth any of those coaches or things like that. But a lot of our kids didn't cry about playing time because when you go on an all-star team, you're talking about the best of the best. And we had some guys on that team that could have played more and, and quite frankly should have played more um, because they represented EMC so well, not just in personality-wise and their behavior, but also their play on the field. Every one of our kids, 68, that played in the All-Star game had an effect on the game. And they, like I said, did not cry about how long they played and this and that and the third. And those guys, I'm just so proud of them because a lot of them had already played a year or two prior on the same team, and that was their last year playing. So for them to go out being an All-Star in the state, being one of the best out of the best, and then be able to go in and experience playing in another state against another state and having success doing so, that's just a cherry on top of the discipline and hard work we put in for those years, for those practices, and they can see that paying off. Because a lot of times, you know how kids are, they, they can't see the next hour or what the next meal is going to be. So when you start to train them, they're like, man, this is tough. You know, and, you know, when are we going to have some some real fun, so to speak, when we're going to start doing this? But to see them grow and get to that game and then to actually have success and see the winning side of it, it just puts a cherry on top of the work that they put in, the discipline that you put in for those kids. So I'm so much proud of them for their efforts um, and, and the success that they got from that. And, and um, what you tell them when they say it's tough Tell them life is tough. It, it really is tough. And those who stick with it, they will eventually uh, receive the benefit of their efforts. Uh, Coach Parker, what about your group, that laid back group? Nine to ten year olds. Yes, sir. Uh, we had a pretty mediocre season. First half of the season, we lost like three or four games, but we won on out the rest of the games. And like Coach Kelly said, we had some kids from my group to go to the South Carolina AAU All-Star game and to the South Carolina, North Carolina All-Star game and win. But like he said, our kids, they have the best discipline and they show up. See, I don't think you had a mediocre season. I think you had a great <laughs> season. I just believe that, and, and have become convinced now that I'm gray-headed and have the experience of looking back is that life really is about more than winning yes, a game. Yes, sir. Life is about being in the game. And life is about how you play the game. Uh, there are some people who will win at all costs to include cheat, but I don't think that's where we are going. And I know, I, I absolutely know you, you will never imply that. So therefore, I think you had a great season because you are teaching them the right thing in the right way. You know, there's an there's a attitude that we've got to have even when we lose. Uh, we, we, there's an attitude. We never lack it. Yes, sir. You're, but, you're but so right. That's the way life is. And I am absolutely convinced, as you said earlier, it is preparing these children to, to be disciplined enough to actually be men in life. You're doing it, and you're doing it well. And so what about the, the coach with the people who know everything? Uh, so uh, this year we actually pre had a uh, pretty good season. Uh, we won four games, lost three. Um, but that's not it, though. That's not really. I mean, I mean, of course you want to be successful in football because that's what we put so much of our time into. But the biggest thing for me is the kid that was started off in alternative school and that's back in his regular school right now. Um, I mean. That's the biggest thing. It's the kid that was failing earlier in the year, and after being smoked so many times, uh, smoke is just uh, what we call discipline. He finally got on track, and uh, 
I mean, like Coach Parker, we had and Coach Kelly, we had kids that go to the All Star game, and uh, we actually lost in the All Star game. But it, it's still, you know, that experience right there is what matters most because uh, the kid that uh, will never get out of Buford had a chance to go to Columbia and to North Carolina. So, I mean, quite frankly, he probably would never had a chance to experience what Columbia was without football. So that's what we measuring on right now. Um, as far as I said, we had a successful season because we turned some lives around that was going down the wrong path, but they're kind of coming back to us now. So that's a good thing. That's what I base it on. You all, um, you talk about um, your seasons, and I, I think your season and your year ha has been exemplary uh, because there are 125 young people in this county who have had experiences now that they would have never had had it not been for EMC. And I am convinced that they have been profoundly changed. Uh, I, th I think it was Coach Kelly said earlier that the discipline that you all instill in them on the field and for fi football doesn't go away. It, it does not go away. It will stick with them for the rest of their lives. And I uh, say to you all, you are making one whale of a, of a difference. And again, I appeal to all the pastors and to every business person, every person who can give to EMC, 100% of everything that you give will go toward the cause. There is no middle person. There is no cut that anybody get. I serve on the board because I want to make sure that when we say and we appeal to people that 100% of everything that they give is going to the cause of being able to send those children to the all-star game up in Columbia and in North Carolina and all of those places. It costs a great deal of money to include the other things that you all are doing. And so uh, I am just uh, convinced that we have got to give you all the funds and the support that you need to be able to continue this and to even expand it. Uh, because the more we can expand it, the more young people that we are affecting, if you will, uh, which means that the outcome will be different. Uh, uh, last year, I had the privilege of sitting in on a fundraiser in uh, seven of the college graduates that have come back. I think there's a total of eight who have graduated from college now. And they, it ranged from one's an engineer all the way uh, to teachers. Uh, uh, Parker Justin mm -hmm. is a product of the EM EMC. He is now uh, a teacher. He, uh, heads up and is the coach for the elite group uh, and that is those 25 uh, young boys that uh, young men who are 13 and above who have performed in an exemplary manner they have to have a 2.5 I believe uh, grade point average in order to be in the elite yes, uh, uh, club and everything those are the kinds of things that you all are doing and I think it is just so beneficial for us to expose all of that to the public so they too can appreciate. The other thing I would ask is, is those parents of those children that you are affecting, my prayer is that they would genuinely appreciate what you all are doing and become more involved in the process, if you will, and supportive. And I am absolutely convinced that we will have better students in school uh, and, and uh, the amazing thing that um, Coach LJ said that to take a, a, a young man out of alternative school, the alternative school program, and get him back to where he is in a regular classroom 
That is absolutely amazing. And we commend you all and the community is indebted to all of you. So I'm going to ask you, uh, if you will, uh, for uh, any closing thoughts. You've got different events scheduled and coming up. I just want to speak on the um, Elite 25 since Justin and I here because um, I think it's such a good program. Um, well, after you don't come through the program from a six-year-old, you know, all the way to 12, now it becomes a... Uh, it it become it becomes a high school and you know high school football it becomes so serious in the uh, the recruiting process like you so much closer to your dream so what what uh EMC Elite Twenty Five does is kind of give these boys a uh, young men a chance to um, get closer to their dreams um, it's some young men um, same thing that we've been doing for them since they've been six years old that wouldn't get the opportunity to go to the camps and stuff that they go to. But because they uh, hold themselves accountable, hold a 2.5 GPA, you know, do things in the classroom that's required of them, this is a chance for them to, you know, this is a chance for them to compete, to earn a spot into this program to where they could get the opportunities that, uh, that the top recruits in the nation are getting because of, because of this program. Um, um, you know, one thing in this world is about... It's, uh, Everything becoming so political. It's about what you know. It's about who you know more than what you know. And uh, I feel like Justin uh, developing such a good group. So he's starting to um, rub elbows with the right people to put these kids in the, in the best um, position. You know, to be to to get the opportunity like everybody else to be a high recruit to realize that their dream is right there. So that's that just what um I just want to speak on the EMC Elite Twenty Five. I, I I absolutely agree with you. We've got from uh, the Extra Mile Club. There are, as we speak right now, there are some EMC uh, uh, young men who are up in the College of Charleston. There are some that is in the Citadel. There's some at Carolina. Uh, uh, Coast of Carolina. There's some up at uh, at um, uh, South Carolina State at uh, USC. I mean, you name it. There are EMC young people who are doing well in college, and you can't do well in college um, if you don't get the grades. And and so preparing them and demanding that they obtain that GPA of 2.5, it, it just lets them know early on you got work to do. You, it's, it's, life is not all about sports because there are only a few people who will ever get into the pros. But if sports can help you to obtain a bachelor's degree, then it, it is well worthwhile. And, and so you all are doing it. You are absolutely doing it. And there are not many people that I have allowed to go over the 30 minutes. <laughs> but, but you all are on, I think, about the 40-minute mark right now. But but you know what? We are not going to bother with that. We, we are going to go ahead and, and we are going to take this time and we are going to give them uh, uh, everything that they need as far as upcoming events. And uh, what I want you to do is just promise me you all have got to come back. I, I, oh, I promise you, absolutely. whenever you're ready, we'll come back because there's nothing that I love talking about more than youth. And you all, as I said, have broke the code. So uh, Coach Kelly is going to tell us about upcoming events. Well, the events we have um, upcoming are, is one of them is a car wash. Um, it's going to be at the Sonic on Robert Smalls. Um, come out and support us on that. Um, we also have, talking about the football side, of, we also have tryouts, and that's going to be April the 23rd, and that's going to be at Well Branch High, and that's going to be on a Sunday, um, and the tryouts start at 3 o'clock. So um, that's from 6 to 12 years old. And, you know, bring some athletic gear, shorts, T-shirt. If you have cleats, that would be absolutely great um, as well. Um, also, we have a pledge breakfast, um, pass some more touched on it briefly about the one from last year. It was so great. Um, the thing about it is that the community does not know what EMC does. Um, they, they may see or hear from time to time, but if you go and attend this pledge breakfast, I can almost guarantee you, you will not leave the same 
as far as your thought process about what EMC does for this community. And you will want to support and have your kids or some or, or friends of yours, their kids, to be a part of this program because that's how great this program is. As Pastor Moore said, he touched on having those um, young men from college coming back to support us. Um, Coach LJ touched on the 25 Elite. Well, what it is, it's not a program that it stops at 12 years old and you just go by the wayside, but it's a program that continues to have support for young men even after um, 12 years of 12 years old. Um, also, too, the last thing I want to mention is, um, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, the Plesh Breakfast is on May the 20th um, from 9 to 1030, and it's going to be at Mount Carmel um, Baptist Church. Um, the address is, that is 367 Kings Neck Road. Um, and the last thing we have is a youth conference, and that's going to be June the 17th, um, 10 to 12, and um, young men ages 6 to 17 will be um, invited to this um, youth conference and lunch will be provided and also the youth conference is going to be at Mount Carmel Baptist Church as well we have uh, we have absolutely dedicated ourselves at Mount Carmel to doing everything that we can to support this program because I am absolutely convinced again that it makes the greatest impact of any program that I have seen to this date uh, if you are listening and if you are a pastor or a business person who really want to attend uh, this pledge breakfast on May the 20th, if you will, uh, it is absolutely free. Uh, Mount Carmel and um, St. Paul uh, Baptist Church, we are donating all of the food we are going to cater it. And uh, if you are a business person or a pastor who would want to attend, I ask you, if you will, all you need to do is pick up the phone and uh, either call the radio station uh, at uh, 843-077-0124. Uh, uh, that is the radio station. Or you can call me on my cell at 843-812-6597. Six five nine seven, and just uh, so we can have a place for you, just tell me your name, uh, uh, who you are, and we will get you a place uh, that you might be able to come and learn more about EMC, and then pledge to do whatever you can uh, uh, for EMC. Again, one hundred percent of everything that you donate will go to the Extra Mile Club. And so with that in mind, uh, we say to you three uh, and to everybody who works in the EMC, we say to you all, we uh, uh, are greatly indebted to you all for everything that you are doing for these children. And again, I just ask you to uh, come back and spread the news about the extra mile clip you have a voice you have a path uh, to the community in this radio station anytime you all decide you've got something that you want to say i invite you to come back and say it may god bless you may he keep you again we've had three of the coaches from the extra mile club uh and that is in the person of coach kelly Coach LJ and Coach Parker, we thank you all and God bless you and your effort. Thank you for having us. Thank you for joining us for Community Corner on 94.5 Praise. And don't forget to join us every Thursday at 7 o'clock for the latest in community programs and highlights. If you want more information on today's topic or guests, you can find it on our website at praise945.com. May the peace and blessings of the Lord be yours.